At a time when many question the quality of modern journalism, which seems too often to be motivated by finding the next clickbait to attract eyeballs and therefore revenue, it's encouraging to see that sections of our mainstream media have not abandoned robust investigative journalism. And I'm referring to Channel 7's Spotlight program on detransitioning. Now, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to do so. At the end of this short video, I'll include a QR code with a link to the full program, but here's just a snippet. I was 15 when I had my breast surgically removed. It's the most controversial story this year, thousands of kids are doing it and regretting it. I've gone through a medical catastrophe. And parents are being kept in the dark. No children should be transitioning without the parents' knowledge and consent. I believe our children are being lied to. This is a generation being brainwashed. It's a medical scandal. Urged on by social media. But it's confused kids that are paying the price. I was just looking for a sense of belonging. Seven New Spotlight on 7 and 7 Plus. It was promoted as the station's most controversial story this year, and I agree, it was. But isn't it crazy that it's controversial to question medical practices that are brainwashing vulnerable kids as young as 11 and 12 into thinking they can change from boy to girl or girl to boy? It is simply not possible to become the opposite sex. To allow gender dysphoric children to think otherwise is a cruel lie. It's a madness that has overtaken rational thinking. Parents watch in horror as their rights are stripped from them, with schools now allowed to secretly transition children to a different gender identity based on the child's self-diagnosis of being transgender without parental notification, consent, or evaluation by a psychologist or medical professional. Kids are being encouraged to change their name and identity. They're given access to the opposite sex bathrooms and change rooms even take dangerous drugs to block puberty, despite the fact that they could be sterilised for life and suffer all means of damage to their health. And if parents object, they are deemed to be unsafe carers, even abusive, along with the threat of losing their children. Jude Hunter is a mum with first-hand experience of the trauma inflicted on young people and their families through this injustice. Hi, I'm Jude. About five years ago, our daughter, who was age 17 at the time, declared quite out of the blue that she was transgender. I was pretty skeptical because I knew there were some other girls in her drama group that were saying the same thing. Unfortunately, she was immediately affirmed as transgender by the medical professionals who were treating her. And despite our objections and attempts to stop it, she was prescribed testosterone very, very quickly and then became estranged from us. Our family has suffered enormously in the last five years and has been torn apart. Our daughter is still estranged from us. I continue to speak out because I want to stop the terrible harm that gender ideology is causing to families and young children. Another mum, Tess Hackett, is the president of Active Watchful Waiting Australasia. My daughter decided to transition in 2016 after a sexual abuse incident. It was a huge shock to learn that she felt that she was a male trapped in a female body. The journey since then has put us onto a really confronting, very confusing, very lonely pathway where nothing makes sense anymore in the world. Um, after her declaration um, and seeking professional help, I was considered abusive and transphobic and a bigot for simply questioning the reality of being anybody trapped in the wrong body. It didn't make sense to me at all. Um, those words didn't make sense to me at all. Um, I, I didn't feel that I was being anything other than a concerned parent. We went to the youth gender clinic and um, after a 25 minute appointment at the end of the appointment the clinic nurse there offered us first puberty blockers and then same-sex hormones before we'd seen a psychiatrist before we'd seen any of the therapists or any of the other professionals and I, I was shocked I was expecting some comprehensive therapy some psychoanalysis something to help her deal with her trauma which was really what had had caused this sudden change in her persona what I learned was that there is no, no method, no pathway other than the affirmation model of care. 
from the minute a child declares that they are trans, they are trans. There's no choice for parents for second opinions. There's no wait and see. There's there's nothing. We just have to simply accept that this person is now a, a new person. And that's where I first, one of the first times I heard um, better a live son than a dead daughter. These brave women care deeply for their children and because of that, they are not prepared to remain silent in the face of evil. Their voices and many others like them need to be widely heard and urgently because Australia is in the grip of record high demand for gender transition for young children. And the only approved treatment is affirmation therapy, puberty blockers, hormone therapy, even radical surgery. Desperate 15-year-old Australian girls are cutting off healthy breasts in order to look like a boy. And regret is hitting many young people hard. The number of detransitioners is growing and the heartache they experience because of irreversible damage to their young bodies and minds is devastating. Bravo to Channel 7 for their research and expose of this injustice. And in doing so, they have given a voice to children, young people and families who have been violated and who are facing a lifetime of regret. The program aired raw emotions such as, I've been violated by the medical industry, left in a no man's land, their wounds, not even scars. I was sexually abused. Being a woman made me feel more vulnerable. I thought changing genders would fix that. No matter what parts of my body I was rid of, no matter what was taken from me, I would always be a woman. Concerned medical practitioners also spoke out, referring to the government-mandated affirmation process, including placing children on medicalised pathways to disrupt puberty as a medical scandal. Puberty is not only a human right of passage into adulthood, it's a basic human right. If only our state and federal government members would be as committed to their research on this as Channel 7. ACL, along with other advocacy groups, parents, and an increasing number of physicians and psychiatrists, have been calling for a government inquiry into best treatment for children who are confused about their gender and who are currently being treated from 11 years old with puberty blockers which precede hormone therapy and even radical surgery. Children are encouraged to undergo medical treatment that will sterilise them, put them on a pathway of lifelong drug taking, even having their breasts or penis removed, all in a vain attempt to satisfy the dislike of their own body. Jude Hunter and Tess Hackett, who you've just heard, have met with politicians. They've explained that they represent families right across Australia who have been devastated by transgender ideology. But despite this, the federal government have, just this week, rejected our petition for an independent inquiry to investigate what should be the foundation of medical best practice in treating gender confusion in children and young adults. To justify their position, they quoted an outdated 2020 report into the treatment of gender dysphoria in Australia. With respect, Mr Albanese, a lot has happened in three years. The response from state governments is just as bewildering. The New South Wales and Tasmania governments are considering conversion therapy laws to criminalise any treatment for gender dysphoria apart from affirmation. Legislation such as this already in Victoria has the effect of prohibiting holistic alternatives to social and medical gender affirmation. This violates any number of fundamental rights and established ethical boundaries, including the rights of parents to guide and protect their children. It's incredibly frustrating to see Australia further mandate affirmation therapy for gender-confused minors, whilst other nations such as Sweden, Finland, England, Denmark all retreat from it. The American Academy of Paediatrics has also recently announced they will carry out a systematic review on the use of puberty blockers. And we are calling on the Australian government to follow their lead and review gender-affirming treatment as a matter of urgency. Spotlight Show has the potential to mark an important moment in the fight for our children. Let's not waste the opportunity. It is way past time for a federal inquiry into gender affirmation therapy. We cannot and we will not remain silent in the face of this injustice for our children. God bless you.